played for Penn State and Jerry Sandusky from 1976 to 1979. He's also a board member of the Second Mile Charity, the foundation started by Sandusky. Matt, what's your reaction to the news conference being canceled? Well, the fact that Joe was told, it's, it's above his head. That's the first thing. And the fact that the university made the decision and, and no questions, wasn't conferred, wasn't anything, that, that makes perfect sense, especially given the legalities of the whole thing. Um, but I also know Coach Paterno well, and I know how he is. And so I could see that Joe would be uh, pretty fired up to want to go out and defend or at least explain where he's coming from. Um, and so, and I'm, and I'm sure he'll do that in due time. I also know that 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 press conference, the way it was set up, or the way, with the potential of all those people being in there, that uh, it wasn't going to be about football. It was going to be about more than that. And certainly, Coach Paterno probably was aware of that. But two things with with Coach Paterno: he is a fighter, number one, and number two, he's an emotional guy. And so, I think right now the best thing is to just clear the table of of, uh, of the emotion. Give us a sense of Penn State and the authority there. Who is more powerful than Joe Paterno around campus? Um, around campus, uh, well, it, would, it has to be the president of the university. That's, that's it. Um, uh, you know, Coach Paterno is a very strong figure. Um, his realm is, is, is the sports world, and um, specifically in the football department. Um, but he carries a high, high profile. And so along with high profile, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that. We all understand, we acknowledge that. Um, but it's not like Coach Paterno, the coach of your football team, is going to make decisions above his head. I mean, it just, I mean, I'm, there are certainly, th there are things they probably would confer with him on, but um, it would have to be the president. Okay. I ask that only because he is more powerful than most yeah. college football coaches the in the country. The if not, yeah. he certainly is. What should be done concerning Joe Paterno's future at this point? Matt, well into his 80s, been there since 1966. Sure. Well, I think what should be done is, is, is real simple, and it's not what you want to hear necessarily. Because I know, the, I know the, the simple answer would just be, hey, the guy needs to go, can him. But this is the United States of America last time I checked. And last time I checked, you're innocent until proven guilty on all the things. And, and it's far-reaching. And so I think what we need to be able to do is divorce ourselves of the emotion of the moment because you and I had a conversation about this before. It's, it's a pretty polarizing topic. And, uh, and you know where I stand on it. Uh, but I think we need to take the emotion out of it and let it play itself out because let the people whose job it is to do the investigation, to ask the right questions, to, to, to put the case all together, let them do their job and then, and then we'll see where it goes. I think we know where every parent stands oh, on this guaranteed. case. And you're a parent, a grandfather, and, and likewise here. But you understand why people are calling for him to go because it, it's not a, a letter of the law, but now it's, it's morals. How did yeah. Joe Paterno hear of this and allow it to happen? And that's the question everybody's asking. Yeah, Why did he just go to the AD? Well, here's what we know, or just what we think we know. We think we know all the answers and all the information. And the facts are we don't. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Okay, so Coach Paterno made a decision based on what he was giving and how that message was delivered and how it was characterized or maybe even marginalized. We have no idea. We don't know what that is. Um, and so I know that man, okay? I know what he stands for for a long time. And I'm not going to sit here and try to defend Joe Paterno, okay? Because of all the people, the irony is that I would be the one defending him after he and I got into many, many arguments and disagreements on a number of subjects. But I do know this. I do know that there's a due process that you're entitled to. And I want to see that process come forth. And it's not the court of public opinion. And so we all have our own opinions. I have some really strong opinions. I shared them with you this morning. And, and to be honest with you, and you can probably hear it, and I, and I apologize to you, I get mad. And it's, uh, it's pretty disturbing. It is. It's a, it's a program. It's like family for you, Matt. And, uh. You know, I think we all understand that. Yeah, just it makes you sick to see that this could happen uh, to this level. If, in fact, that has happened, then um, 
you know, there's a part of me that, like I mentioned you earlier, just viscerally, you just want to go take care of it yourself, which is what I've always done and which is the wrong thing to do. But um, this is more than just a program. This is more than a football legacy. This is about people. And if we can't protect our kids, we as a society are pathetic. And so that's where I stand on it. And I know, as I mentioned, Jerry Sandusky, your position coach, your right. coordinator, um, he he's first spoke to you when he wanted to start the Second Mile right. Foundation. Matt, who is Jerry Sandusky? Who, do you know right now? or, or oh, What I us, thought I knew or what I know? Yeah, is. Jerry Sandusky is your next door neighbor. He's the guy you know your whole life. He's a helpful guy. He's a, he's a lighthearted guy. He's, he's a smart guy. He's, he's, a, he's a willing to help person. He's everything you want. I mean, that's the thing that just, could you see it coming? I mean, I, I've sat here, I've known the guy since 1976. I've, I've been in meetings with him. He's been in my home. I've just, um, I can't. I go back and think about it, you got to be kidding me. I couldn't even imagine this. And I got to think that that's the same thing Coach Paterno's thinking. I just, it's. And so that's why I say divorce yourself from the emotion of it. And I apologize for getting emotional. But let, let it run its course. It has to do that. And then let the, let the people whose job it is to put this thing together and figure it out, let them do their job. Does the university have time to let it run its course, as angry as people are, and how much the football program produces financially? And there's oh, yeah. a lot of realistic things oh, I'm yeah. sure a board will be looking at. This is a big... Do they have the time to let it run its course, or they need to address this? Well, now? the university will have to set its own timetable. And so they'll determine what that timetable is. And so they're going to have to be able to determine who has the time and who doesn't have the time. And Chris, you and I both know, look, we know what we read in the paper. And we know having, being in this business, it's just a fraction of what's going on. And so maybe they have information we don't have. Maybe, I, I, that's the first part of it. Then there's a whole nother part because the university is still a business that needs to be run. And the reality is there are, there are people who donate lots of money, uh, who sponsor, th that, that's a whole nother world. And then there's a political side to it. And that's a reality whether we want to believe it or not. And so there are so many facets to this thing. And then you just boil it down to one thing. It still comes down to, and I apologize for ranting, it's just, it bothers me. Man's inhumanity towards man is just mind-boggling. Where, where, where do we stop with this stuff? Drives me nuts. And the university knew of this investigation ongoing for several years, right. as did the foundation, the Second Mile Foundation. And it comes to light yesterday. Um, today, also being Election Day, what you mentioned is there's also political ramifications here. And this is everything Penn State needs to sort out and quickly. Yeah, they do. They need because there's a train coming down the tracks, whether you want to believe it or not. And it's headed right for you, so you better get ready for it. And the best way to do it is to deal with it honestly. And I've said this, and I've tried to live this way, and I know I fail at it, but listen, no excuses, no explanations. Step up, take what you're supposed to take, and move on. And that's what you do. That's what you're supposed to do. And let's see if it happens. You mentioned the train coming down the tracks. Does the NCAA have a seat on that train? Where does the NCAA factor into this? I, I, I mean, this is really, this is really an indictment of us as a society when we talk about this. Here's this, this program, and you look at it from the NCAA side, they didn't break any rules, they didn't commit any violations, there's no money being paid, there's no, so from a football standpoint, they're, they're out of it. But from a bigger picture, I have to think they're already involved. They have to be. I mean, this is, the Penn State program has always been above everything else, largely because that's what Joe espoused and lived, and it was day-to-day. -day. And was he perfect? No. No, he made some mistakes, but he corrected them, he faced them, and then he owned up to them, and that's what set him apart. And so I would expect that the, that the NCAA is jumping in at some level, um, but the bigger fact remains that Penn State 
has to stop the train or face the train, and that's what it is. And it's, it's bigger than institutional. This is about people, because we are what make up the institutions. And so there's some people who've been hurt in a major way, and that, that needs to be rectified. And there was Joe Paterno, Paterno's way, was it not to not just teach football, but to teach young men how to live right. their lives, get an education, and uh, for so long he was what was different for many years now and, in and college sports. And you know, sports. Chris, he, the shame of this, if this goes down the tracks that it looks like it's going down, mm -hmm. um, that is, that's not going to, Joe Paterno was different than everybody. He was just... And as much as I argued with the guy, and we, and, and believe me, we had some humdingers, okay? <laughs> I still respected the fact that he stood for something. He was able to stand his ground no matter what. Rick, whether it was a political stance or whether it was a moral stance or whatever it was, he stood for something and he believed it. Mm -hmm. and, and he stood his ground and he'd fight you on it. And he's going to fight on this one too. I know that guy too well. Um, but that shouldn't... It's going to, but it shouldn't tarnish. For, there's so many more good things that have come out of that program and from that man, and, and then this thing's going to come up, and this is what's going to end up biting him in the rear end. I hope it doesn't, and, um, but again, let's see how it plays itself out. Well, we always wondered what it would take Jeez. for Joe Paterno. A horror, a horror picture on... screenwriter couldn't write this bad a script. Unimaginable crimes could possibly do him in. Unbelievable. Matt Millen, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Us. Sorry, no, people. Don't be. You're human.